Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Internet. Let's worship together. You can, Internet, you don't have to stand, probably. Well, I want these rest of these people to stand. Number 288. Number 288 will give you time to find the song. Along a dark and gloomy path, I crouch beneath the shades of death. No hope beyond my dying breath, till light from the Savior came. In the light of God, now my soul is singing, all, all is bright. I'm now in the light of God. My darkness now is passed away. In Jesus, all is perfect day. And peace and comfort ever stay. Since Christ is my perfect life. In the light of God. Now my soul is singing all Oh God, I'm now in the light. Keep singing. Oh Jesus, to my heart so sweet, thy words are unto my feet. How holy, happy, and complete I walk in the perfect light. In the light of love, now my soul. Right in the light of God, I'm now. Sing the last verse again, would you please? Oh, glory to my Savior's name, to do thy will, my highest name. Thy favors more than earthly fame, thy smile is my constant life. In the light. standing please Amen. well that's really what counts isn't it to be walking in the light yes. this is a shocking experience <laughs> thank God for the light Amen. if we walk in the light as he is in the light what happens we have fellowship thank God for fellowship tonight Yes. Okay, uh, we're going to go to the Lord here shortly in prayer. Uh, lots of burdens, especially remember, here he is over here, Brother Paul, he will be leaving at 545 in the morning uh, by himself to Guatemala. Certain circumstances have arisen that has caused this to happen. And while we're talking about that, remember Brother and Sister Kelly, yes. Clay City, uh, Sister Debbie's son, passed away, and of course that's really, really a heavy burden for both of them, so we need to remember them in a special way. Uh, Brother and Sister Gauz is out tonight. I saw him here this morning. Thank God for every time we oldies are able to get out or we come regardless of where we're able or not. We want to, you know, seize the moment, brothers and sisters. Yes. Seize the moment. I've thought a lot about that as I get a little bit older. Notice I said a little bit older. You know, we're only going through this life once. That's 
That's true. And this service tonight will never be in it anymore. Amen. And I'm going to put everything I can by the grace of God into it. And I'm Amen. sure, hopefully, all of you intend to. We used to talk about in football, and I'll shut up pretty soon, leaving it all on the field. Brother Hoss, you know what it is to leave it all on the field? Yeah. Tell these people what it is. It'll mean something coming from you. <laughs> Give it everything you got. Worship God yes. in spirit and in truth. Okay, That's Brother true. Bob, i got to fulfill my promise. You come ahead and <coughs> you know a lot of these burdens that were presented this morning. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to ask them from the audience because I can't hear them anyway. And Sherman isn't any good. He can't hear them either. So, <laughs> Brother Bob, you heard him this morning. For a prayer, I just wanted to uh, mention to you that there's several papers that I've had reprinted from missionaries around the world that's laying out there on the table. Pick them up, take them home, read them, and then pray for those people. Yeah. God's working all around this world, and thank God for what he's doing. And he's working here. Thank God, Lord, for all of he's done here yes. for the good message this morning. Yeah. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, one more time for the great privilege we have to call upon your name. We thank you, Father, that you're the God of this world, and you're the one, Lord, that uh, does all of the things that are done in the world, Father. It's all by your wisdom, Father. God, we just pray that your divine hand, Lord, would look upon the needs of these people, Father, these many requests that's been made, that's been read off here, Father, those that have lost loved ones, God. Father, where the death has entered the family, Lord, and those that have had operations, God. And, and Father, we pray that you'll look upon them, visit those sick rooms, Father. Lord, we pray your divine hand move in that spatial way. And Heavenly Father, as Brother Paul goes down to Guatemala, we pray, Jesus, that you'll be with him, Father. Oh, God, guide him and direct him and give him wisdom and understanding, Father. And, oh, Lord, bless the people there, Lord, that much can be accomplished in that convention, Father. We just pray, Lord, that you'll move upon our upcoming revival, Father. You know, Lord, uh, all the ones, God, that stand in need, Lord, in our community, in our city, in our county. We pray in Jesus' name that you'll move upon hearts, Father. We know, God, that you left your Holy Spirit here for us, Father. Lord, you moved upon the hearts of man. You changed men. Lord, you said you'd make new creatures out of us, Father. We thank you for that great blessing, Lord. We thank you, God, that life turns around when you come in. Father, we thank you from the deep of our soul. We ask you, Jesus, that you'll bless this service tonight. Ask you, Father, you'll move upon the speaker of the hour. God, we pray that your anointing rest upon him, Father. We pray in Jesus' name that you'll open all of our ears, God, that we might only hear, not only hear, but understand, Father, the teaching that you're teaching us, Father, that, Lord, that you'll apply, God, the word of life to each and every heart that's gathered here this evening. Lord, we ask of you to be with those that are sick and afflicted in our midst, God. You would touch them, Father. May their, may their bodies, Lord, feel the touch of your mighty hand, God. Father, your healing be upon them, Lord. You said in your word, God, at anything we ask in, in the... We ask you in Jesus' name, you would do it, Father. And we yes, thank God. you for those promises that you've given us, God. We ask you this evening, you'll bless the choir, bless the special singing, Father. Lord, we pray that you'll talk to each heart, God. Father, you know the thoughts of every mind. And God, every, everything that has need, we pray, God, that your word, Lord, would cover it this evening, Father, that we might learn of you no more, Father, of your will for our lives and our labors, God. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll bless each and every one, God, that's here, that has been suffering afflictions. We pray you'll be with them. Be, Lord, with all of our teachers. Be with our pianists, Lord. 
Oh God, be with our every leader, all of our all of our trustees. God, we pray that you'll just move upon each and every one, Father, and help us, Lord, to be a working body, God, that your name can be glorified in our midst, Father. We ask these things all in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'm thankful, I've said this before, I'm thankful that this thing of walking with God is real. And Christianity and my Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, we hear so much, I was reading in a little devotional this morning about the Beatitudes and how far apart and how opposite the world is and the world's take on everything compared to the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit and the humble and the meek. And I'm thankful for the word of God and 
scriptures that just remind us that, you know, we're just passing through life and that we have a hope that we can take clear through eternity and however long our little pea brains can fathom however long eternity is going to be. I don't know if you've ever tried to think about that, but it, my, my brain only goes so far and then it just shuts down. <laughs> but, you know, we were, we went down to Brother Spencer's funeral. And he sang this song, it was recorded. And I always loved this song from the first time I'd heard it. And you know, the more, the longer you live and the more you see precious saints of God that gain their reward. Doesn't it just make you want to go home just a little bit? Does it get you excited just a little bit about what's coming? It, it excites me. The promises that God has given us. And the future that I have as a Christian. And if God takes me tonight, I can't wait. And if he takes me in 30 years, I'll have to wait. <laughs> but while I'm here, it's my desire to serve him. And to live for him and to be faithful. And to do what I can to help a fellow brother or a fellow sister make it home because it's going to be worth it. I'll shut up and sing. I'm thankful for the Lord tonight. They say heaven's pretty living here is too. But if they said that I would have to choose between the two, I'd go home. Going home where I belong. Sometimes when I'm dreaming, it comes as no surprise that if you look, you'll see that homesick feeling in my eyes. I'm going home. I'm going home where I belong. While I'm here, I'll serve Him gladly and sing Him all these songs. I'm here, but it's not for long. When I'm feeling lonely and when I'm feeling blue, Oh, it's such a joy to know that I am only passing through. I'm going home. I'm going home where I belong. And one day, when I'm sleeping and death knocks on my door, then I'll awake to find that I'm not homesick anymore. I'll be home. I'll be home 
where I belong. While I'm here, I'll serve him gladly and sing him all these songs. I'm here, but it's not for long. I'm going Thank the Lord for the beautiful scene. Now comes the hard part. I got to introduce Brother Paul. That's not fair, Brother Tony, have me introduce him, not give me a paper with his credentials and so forth on it, how many degrees he's got and how many sermons he's preached and how many countries he's been to. But I can say about, I can say this about him. He and I have eaten iguana together before. Now you got to tell me what iguana is, and I'm not going to ask Hoss this time because he probably doesn't know, and I don't want to embarrass him. Iguana is like a lizard. Iguana is like a lizard, and in Guatemala they are delicates. They pay a big price to get them. We were down there one time, and OCL, he's superintendent uh, over the school down there, and the interpreter, and his wife is a good cook. Well, we got, they, they're on sale at the supermarket, just like ribs and all that kind of stuff is about here. So she went to the supermarket and got us like five iguana, okay, and fixed them and fixed them in a broth, and they were really, really tasty. Had a lot of little eggs with them, okay. And older sister Kelly, she's deceased now, Brother Kelly's mother was there. I noticed her, and she ate one of the eggs and maybe ate a second one. But I tried one of them, and it was kind of bitter, and I had several on my plate, and I had a big pile of bones under there, and I just conveniently moved those eggs under the pile of bones. But anyway, I was doing okay eating that iguana. I looked, and there was a little arm sticking up with a hand on it and all that, and I, that was the end of eating iguana with me. But Brother Paul, when he's in uh, Guatemala, he does lots of things. And um, God will help him. He'll be okay. But he's going to have his plate full this time. So you need to pray earnestly for him. Because he's going to be preaching the seminars. And I don't know where he's scheduled to speak at night or not. But anyway, he usually takes people home in the van. And he has to keep the jet pump running and all. They got an old jet pump down there. It tears up two or three times while we're in convention. He has to keep that in repair. And he has to do... Lots and lots of other jobs. But I believe he can do it. I believe he's like the little engine. You know, he got toward the top of the hill and he said, I think I can. Well, what did he do when he got to the top? I knew I could. I knew I could. So Brother Paul's going to come back with a good report for us. Thank the Lord. Brother Paul. Well, my plate will be full and I hope it's not full of iguana, I can tell you that. Not a fan of iguana at all. But uh, anyway, we thank God. I really do want to tell you tonight, I appreciate the church's support of, of the work in Guatemala and of our trip. Uh, financially, we have, the church has really blessed us and uh, blessed the work there, this convention. We uh, wouldn't be able to do what we're doing this round, to be honest with you, if it hadn't been for... Uh, for the, the the offering that this congregation has given. So we really appreciate that. I want to tell you thank you, and I appreciate your prayers. Uh, we uh, have been preparing uh, for a couple of months now, or a month and a half or something, for uh, to be able to teach there. And God's really just uh, helped with that in a, in a big way. And so we're, we're ready with God's help. Amen. So we appreciate your prayers. Uh, tonight, what I want to talk to you about is receiving and believing. Receiving and believing. And I, this message has really weighed heavy on my heart all week long, just with a lot of different things that have transpired. And, 
and uh, ran into a, a lot of people that I've known for a lot of years this past week. And, and just uh, my heart's been burdened uh, for, for different ones, people that I just got a, I just got a love for. And, and you know, you want to you wanna see your family, you want to see your friends, you want to see the people you know, the saints, children, come to know God, right? That's, that's what we long for. We want to see people come to a relationship. But uh, um, this scripture will start out in the book of John, the 12th chapter. And this is what it said to us. It says, I, I, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my word and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him. And the last day, now, you know, you take that uh, verse 48 there and he says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word. I want to take you to the book of John. This Adam, this isn't up there, but I was thinking about this as I was sitting there. Uh, John 1, 1, you're familiar with these scriptures. It says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, when we talk about a rejection here, it says that he that re rejects me, and then it says and, and rejects the word. And they're almost synonymous with one another because it says right here that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So to, to reject the word of God is, is to indeed reject God himself, to, to reject Christ, and so uh, uh, to receive it. Uh, that's what I want to talk about tonight. It, it's, you know, we, we can hear the word of God. You know, we can, uh, we can like the word of God. We can be a fan of the word of God. And all of that is great, but it, but it, but it is, is to no effect unless you receive the word of God. Uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to believe, right? I mean, you can believe and still not receive. Is that possible? I mean, we could probably go around the room tonight. Did you believe in God before you got saved? Very likely, a lot of us did. We, we believed in God, and maybe we had questions, but, but we believed in something, right? Uh, we believed before we actually received uh, and, and, and took that into our lives. And, 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 and this is, I, I was just, even this week, ran into so many people that I know, I know they believe. And, 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 and we've got to be careful ourselves, saints, not to just believe without, without a reception of what it is that God has said. Amen. And it's important that, uh, uh, that we take in the entirety of the Word of God. And that's, that's the other portion of this message tonight is not just, to, you know, not just to take in a portion of the Word, but to, to receive the Word in, in its entirety, to take hold of that and allow it to... To make change. And doesn't that spell out the very idea of belief? If we've believed and received, uh, then the product should be change. Amen? Would you agree with that tonight? If we have believed and received the word, then the product of that should be change in our life. If I've received the word of God into my life, then the thing that ought to take place is change. I'm changed, I'm changed by the word of God. And we have so many descriptions when it comes to this. It talks about uh, that we're cleansed by the washing of the water of the word. The, uh, the word of God cleanses us. It, it, it's, it's this process that takes place in our life. The word should indeed just completely, uh, should transform our lives. And the Bible even says that. It says we're transformed uh, more and more into the image of Jesus Christ. And again, here we go. Uh, Jesus in the beginning was the word and the word was was with God and the word was God. We're being more transformed more and more to where our lives line up with what this word says. Amen. I mean, uh, there's a reflection, right? Isn't that a, another place that the Bible describes it in just that way that we see our lives in a, in a mirror when we look at this word and we, uh, we, we don't always like to see what we, uh, what, what comes back in the reflection that we don't always like to see uh, as we compare our lives to Christ's life. Uh, it's so important that we're, uh, that we uh, not only have received that in the beginning to a, to a walk of salvation, but that we continue to receive it. Amen. Uh, I was thinking as I was, 
as I was getting ready, I, I, there was a man that come to mind. I remember I, I worked with him some number of years ago. And I, he, this man had sung gospel music. He was part of a group and all over the country. And, and, and he was telling me, we were sitting there at work, and, and he was telling me about how he, how he didn't have to... Uh, he didn't have to read his, uh, read his Bible anymore. Thank you, Brother Rube. But he was telling me how he didn't have to read his word anymore. Because he had read it. Because he had already read it. That he didn't have to read it anymore. He, like he'd already got it. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, I, I, you know, I knew me. I mean, I, was, I need the word. Amen. There's scriptures that I've read a hundred times and all of a sudden God will reveal something new in that same scripture that I read a hundred times. Isn't it amazing how God does that? How he can take the same, and that, 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 so either, we, either we have arrived at a place in our experience where we can receive it now, where maybe we weren't ready to receive it before, but, but for whatever reason, God said, listen, now you're ready to receive this. And, 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 and so the word speaks to us anew, and that reading it over and over again, and it speaks something new. And hey, Who else has had that experience in here? Amen. Isn't that, the, the word of God is alive, and it's anointed. Amen. And so, uh, so that uh, we, we will never get to a place, I, I believe, as long as we're on this earth, uh, as long as we live, we'll never get to a place where we have, uh, we have fully grasped the entirety of our word. Amen. And that's, that's saying an awful lot. It's not like a, a book that you can just, uh, just study and pick up and, and just say, well, I've gotten to the end of it and I've got it. I don't believe the word of God will ever be that way. With us, amen. It, it's constantly growing and it's constantly revealing new truths and fresh truths. It's constantly uh, uh, amplifying those truths in our lives. Uh, and so we got to constantly be going to it. And I was thinking, you know, uh, even a good garden, amen, uh, the ground has to continue to be tended to, amen. So, so maybe, you know, we, we get to, I was thinking of another man. It was two different ones that just kept coming to mind. There was another man who told me that, uh, that he, I mean, he boasted of his intelligence and, and, and how there was nobody that could minister to him because he was more intelligent uh, than the people around him. And I was thinking, brother, you've got life messed up here. I mean, God can use a donkey to minister to somebody. Amen. God would take the rocks and have them praise him if men stopped praising him. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, we'll never get to a place. I'm going to tell you something right now. Sometimes my little ones minister to me. Amen. And then sometimes my kids minister to me. Sometimes it's, it's, it's my children that will reveal something to me and remind me of something. Listen, I'm going to tell you, saints of God, uh, we've got to make sure that we are allowing our guard, our, our, our ground uh, to be tender to the place, our hearts to be tender, that we continue to receive. Amen. And we don't just arrive at a place in our life where, uh, where we, we think we've got it. Uh, and, 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 and indeed, really, if that's the place that you've arrived at, guess what? It's a pretty good chance that you haven't. Amen. I mean, honest to goodness, if we get to a place where we think we've just got it, it's a pretty good chance. If that's what we're thinking, then we don't. Amen. God help us tonight. We should be hungry. Believe that tonight. We should be hungry for the word of God. Hungry for that change. How many people I mean, do we you go through life with that, that hear and hear and there's no change? I mean, go, you, I mean, you can come to church. You can sit here. You can hear. And if there's no change. It, 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 there's all kinds of conditions that can come to that. Uh, whatever uh, the root of that could be, it could be anything. It could be uh, whether we've got a hard heart, whatever it is tonight. Amen. But there's many different things that can lead to that. Receiving is more than just hearing. Amen. Acts 26, 26 through 28 says this, For the king knoweth of these things, familiar with this story, King Agrippa, for the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. 
For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? He asks the questions. And then, he, and then he comes back over the response. I know that thou believest. He asks him, do you believe the prophets? And then, hey, I know that you believe. And then he goes beyond. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. See, a belief, it just wasn't enough, was it? I mean, he believed, but it wasn't enough to persuade him. His belief uh, didn't bring about a reception. His belief, uh, you know, he was stagnant in his belief. He was stale in this place of belief. He, uh, without the reception, uh, without the reception, there was no change and there was no acceptance. Amen. Of what it was that God had said. Our desire, amen is to see those around us, not just hear, but accept. And I was doing a study of the word, the particular word there, it's lumbano, uh, when it comes to, uh, to accepting or to receive is the word. But it's, it, you know, there's a lot of words that go along with that, acceptable to catch, to find, to be found, to obtain, amen, to take. Do we take in the word of God? See, if you don't take in the word of God, you're destined to be, de destined to be deceived. Now take this tonight. I mean, we're living in a time, all you got to do is take a look around. You know that's true. If you're not taking in the word of God, you're destined to be deceived. I just have to be honest tonight, and we'll call it out. The Pope said this last week, that there's not even a hell. Folks, I'm going to tell you, if you don't take in the word of God... If you don't receive the word of God, you're destined to be de deceived. Now you ponder this for just a second. How many people are following that? How many people are going to just take that into their bosom? How many people are going to take what this man has said into their heart? I just have to be, let me just... You, know, you have to sometimes, you, you, you know, we're, you know we're, we're, we're live broadcasting and I try not to let that affect me. Because see, things like this need to be talked about. And when you hear something so foolish, what does the word of God say? How dare you, as a mere man, try to change what it is that the word of God has said? I was thinking about this a week and I was like, you know, here we've got entire religions in this day, saints of God. Listen to me. You and I must receive the word of God. Uh, take that into our heart. Take it all the way down into the depths of our soul to the place that we're not just believing, but we're allowing it to change us. We're allowing it to transform us. We're allowing it, uh, God to speak to us. We are indeed meditating upon that word day and night. That we're taking, uh, the Bible says to write it upon the tables of your heart. Listen, if you don't see what's going on around us today and don't get and understand why that is so significant, it's more than just a ritual. Amen. There has to be a reception to the place of change. That we are indeed new creatures in Christ. A man of God that is walking with God. Uh, that is uh, worshipful in the spirit of God. Uh, that is indeed tending to the, spirit of, uh, to the things of the spirit of God. Cannot be deceived. Somebody shout with me tonight. Isn't it good to know that? Amen. I have the Spirit of God in me. And I, I, if, 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 it were, if I were apart from God and apart from His Spirit, amen, I could be deceived, but with Him. I know that I'll not be deceived. Amen. So when I hear a, a man or a woman make such a statement, the first thing that hits my head, they are deceived. How did you get to that place? Well, we, we know how they got there. You know, they were leaning to their own understanding. God said, don't lean to your own understanding. There is no hell. Well, whose understanding did that come from? You ain't reading the same Bible I am. Amen. Come on, church. God help us. 
Well, we might as well, we've talked about Catholics for a second. We might as well go ahead and run across the gamut for a second. I mean, we've got, we've got Joseph Smith and people that are following that mess. Church, we've got to call what's wrong, wrong. Amen. We can't be fearful of those things. God said, listen, I, if, if anybody come preaching, some of the message, the disciples told him, if anybody come preaching something else, even if an angel, they even went back to the place saying, even if we come preaching something, if I come preaching some other gospel, amen, if I come preaching something else, let it be a curse. Don't pay no attention to it. Joseph Smith comes about and says, this angel of Mormon brought him some whole new, whole nother book altogether that people are still supposed to follow. Church, don't, don't get fearful. We almost act like we're scared to speak against these things. Amen. I, I'm not speaking against people. Amen. So you're going to hear me preach against some things. I'm going to preach against homosexuality. Do you understand that tonight? Not because I'm against a person that has been caught up in that sin. I'm not speaking against the person. My God, I love them. And I want to see them one to the truth. That's my desire. It's not, it's, not, it's not them that we're preaching against. If you're in this room and you're an adulterer and I'm, I'm preaching on adultery, hey, it's not you that I'm preaching against. It's your deed. It's the sin. It's the thing that Christ died for to separate you, to win you from. Amen. God, help us to quit being scared Christians that we won't speak against these things that are, that are sending people to hell. Amen. What is this going to do to people? I mean, look at the doctrines that are in our land. Now we've got the Pope saying there is no hell. And then we got a whole other group of Protestants that will try to tell you, you don't have to worry about it anyway because all you had to do was accept Jesus and you can live however from here to the end. And you're going to be like, listen, look at, the, look at the tales that the devil's spinning. Well, you ain't got to worry anyway because there ain't no hell. But if you don't want to believe that, believe this. That once you got saved, it's all good. Jesus took care of everything. Look at, that, look, at, look at what the enemy is trying to do in our land. Saints of God, if you don't know how to pray, amen, if you don't know what to pray about, this, these things we need to pray about. Because, because the Pope has an effect on a lot of people. The things that he's saying, it, it, it has a great, a, a great effect. And people are, are received. That is not what God's word says. And people are receiving this, Ben. People are receiving these things. And it's not, it's, we, we, if there is anything we should be rejecting, it's anything that contradicts our word. Amen? See, it's okay. Listen to me, church. It's okay to reject some things. It's all right. You're allowed to reject what's wrong. You're allowed to speak against what's wrong. <laughs> I feel like just dancing across some of these pews tonight, church. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, if you think that God is pleased with this sorry mess out there, I'm going to tell you right now. If you think God is pleased with a bunch of tight-lipped Christians that are scared of the world, I can tell you right now, you are dead wrong about the God that I serve. Amen? You're dead wrong. And these people that are popping up and, and, and giving us all kinds of names because of some of the things that are taking place in our land. Listen, you have to understand today. Amen? You have to understand that we have been called to be the salt Amen. We have been called to be the light, meaning in darkness, you and I are called to reveal light. We're not, we're not hidden under a bushel. Right? Listen, you know, you know the scriptures. We're described to be a city set on a hill, not hidden. Amen. What light are we revealing? We are revealing the very thing that I'm talking about, the word of God. And what does the word of God say? Amen. But we want to hide that because we don't want to offend nobody. Amen. We don't want to make nobody mad. We don't want to upset nobody. 
Brother Paul, don't talk about the Mormons. The Mormons are going to get upset. Maybe the Mormons will get saved. Not saying all Mormons are lost. But they are following some false doctrine. Amen? Some of you are scared to say amen to that. Don't get stuck. What, what would have happened to us? We have been browbeated by the world when we get to the place where we're scared, amen, to take a stand for the truth. Amen? We're to receive the word of God. Listen, the disciples received the word of God to the place that they were willing to die. You guys know the scripture. They loved not their lives unto the death. I mean, they, they went into town squares and preached things that the people around said, hey, you don't need to be preaching that stuff. Don't be preaching that. Amen. They continued anyway. Oh, they got thrown in jail for it. In jail, not supposed to be talking about it. And they're still preaching it. They're singing it. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, I'd rather sit in jail with God on my side than to sit on the sideline on a pew somewhere and be quiet because I'm afraid of what the world is going to do. My God tells me not to fear man, but to fear Him. Amen? Church, I'm going to tell you something. We need a, I hate to call it a new attitude. You can call it what you want to. Maybe it's a fresh anointing. We need, we, need to be, we need to be fresh in our experience and there needs to be a full reception of God's Word and understand that God did not set us to the side to be quiet. Amen! Amen. Church, listen to me. We're, this is not the day or the time or the hour for the church to be silent and to be sitting in fear and, and, and worried about what everybody's going to think or say. Amen? I feel like time and time again, I've got to stand up here and explain to you that, that it's out of love that we preach against what's wrong. Or maybe you say, well, Brother Paul, you sound like you're being harsh. Well, it's okay to be harsh against sin. It's killing people. It's sending people to hell. If there's anything we ought to be harsh about, it ought to be sin. Amen. It ain't about people. It's not about the people. It's about the sin that's destroying them. And it's about a system that is lifting these things up. And people are going into it believing that somehow they're going to be okay with God. When God has said, thou shalt not. Amen. God help us tonight. Amen. To be able to love as Christ loved. And to separate good from, from bad. Amen. To rightly divide the word of God to accept it into our hearts and be able to admonish our brother and sister when they are walking in something that we know that God speaks in contradiction to. Amen? Saints of God, if that's not our role, what is our role? I mean, somebody, somebody come talk to me after church tonight. Because if that's not our role, I have totally misunderstood my calling as a child of God. My word tells me to snatch them from the fire, JJ. What does it mean? What fire? What fire? Jesus told us right here, he that, didn't, that rejects me and doesn't receive my word, they're judged. I didn't come to judge them, he said. They're judged. And how are they judged? They're judged by this very word that we're reading. And when the word speaks against it, it's, you're not judging them. Quit taking that title. Quit judging me. I'm not judging you. The Word of God judges you. Amen. Are you walking in opposition to this? If you are, then you have to understand that in the end, you will be judged by this Word. It's not my Word. It's not my opinion. You can put whatever title you want to on me. Amen. We've got to stand on the right side of things, church. Amen. Without, without fear. Amen. And of course, I understand this. We're to be bold. We're to be bold. There's a difference between boldness and arrogance. Amen. But we are called to be bold. God, if God listen, I'm going to tell you. If God says I can come to his throne boldly, I can go to this world boldly. Do you understand that? 
If God has accepted me to the place that he says, listen, you come to my throne boldly. Then I, then I, ha I understand who I am in Jesus Christ. That I have, uh, we have together a message for this world that we are to take boldly into the world. You don't like it? I'm so sorry. You don't like it? It doesn't change it. And it ain't going to stop me from preaching it. It ain't going to stop me from talking about it. It ain't going to stop me from posting on Facebook about it. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, it ain't going to stop us. Church, that's, that's the mentality. We need some Caleb's around here. It ain't going to stop me. I, I see you giants out there. I see your armies. I see who you got gathered up. I see what's over there in your land. I see what y'all been working up on. I see this mess that y'all have come up with. I see all of these things. Let's go get them. Let us with God go get it. Amen. Church, we have a high calling. Nobody else is going to take care of God's business but God's people. Amen. We can't wait on somebody else. It's us, church. Be bold. Hallelujah. Make me want to go to Guatemala and preach to somebody. <laughs> Amen. We got a message. Church, we have got a message that is so beautiful. You don't have to be scared of it. And when you see somebody preaching a message, I don't care if it's the Pope. Amen. I don't care who it is. When you see somebody preaching a message that's wrong, call it out. Amen. Call the message out. Pray for the messenger. But you call the message out. Pray for the Pope. Pray for the Pope. I'm going to tell you right now, yeah, he needs to get saved. I mean, he's deceived. Guys, he's deceived. He has to be. You couldn't make that kind of statement and not be deceived. You don't have to wonder. Hey, it's, it's the fruit hanging off the branches. That's not judgment. That's just saying, hey, listen, that's, some, that's the wrong fruit hanging off that tree. Where did that come from? Because see, that, that, that fruit that should be being produced in his life, come on now. That fruit that's being produced in a life, it ought to resemble. Amen? What, what should you be saying? It's the Spirit of God that should... That, we, we're not producing this fruit. The Spirit of God in us is producing this fruit naturally because of our walk. When it begins to... It so means the truth is going to be produced. Amen? It's the thing that's going to be revealed. So when you see something that is, is in contradiction, then you know that it didn't come from God. Amen? My desire, you know, in my life and in my walk with God is I, I don't want to just get into uh, just a, a ritual with God, but I want an encounter with God, right? And I was thinking about what do we, as, a, as the body of Christ, what do we desire when it comes to the people that are walking through these doors? We don't want them to just get involved in our rituals. Come meet our pastor. Come meet our associate pastor. Let me, let me, let me, meet, let me let you introduce you to, to our song leader and our Sunday school teachers, and all of that's good. But the truth about it is what we really want is we want our people coming in and having an encounter with God. Amen? Amen. So we got to be prayerful about the ministry. Meaning, you got to pray for the pastor, pray for your associate pastor, pray for your son. Why? Uh, because, because you're dependent that God uses the individuals within the body of Christ, amen, in order to do the work of God, amen, in this place. Amen. And so our desire ought to be. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, if we get tight-lipped, listen to me, church. If we get tight-lipped on the Word of God because we begin to get fearful of what people are going to think, I'm going to tell you right now, all of the blessing of God will be lifted off this place. You have to know that. You, you can't soft-soap the things of God. You just got to lay it out there. It's not about being mean. It's not any of those things. It's just as simply as being, hey, listen, we have got to be honest because there is no time to play around with it. Amen. You and I together have got to be praying, not just for one another, but for 
the families that are involved, the people that are connected with this congregation. Church, I'm going to tell you, we've got a good thing. Amen. We've got a good thing. We've got to hold on to that. Amen. We've got to guard. We've got to guard that. I was reading something, Brother Bruce. I seen him here a minute ago. Where's he? He's right there in front of me. That's why I couldn't see him. But one of the things that was said, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but it, the, the man was talking about it. He said, listen, you can call me a lot of names. And I'm paraphrasing. So you can call me a lot of things. Call me a Bible thumper. Call me what? It, call me right wing. Call me whatever you want to call me. But make sure when you're throwing out titles, make sure one of those titles is Watchman on the Wall. And church, that's what we're called to be. We're called to be the Watchman on the Wall. So when we see things coming, we're supposed to be sounding the alarms to say, hey, listen, understand this, this, this modern grace movement. Church, don't, don't take that in. That's not truth. The Pope, there is no help. Don't take that into your bosom, church. Don't, don't receive that. These, these things that, uh, that are so deceptive, that are dry, don't take that in and make sure that we're sounding the alarm. Amen. God help us tonight. That we receive the Word of God into our lives. And, and that ought to be the prayer. I was thinking about some of these that I ran into this week. And I thought, you know, as we, we lay a friend to rest this past week, you know, and, and you just think about King Agrippa. I, I was almost persuaded. Almost persuaded don't get you into heaven. Amen. You think about all of these people, the people in your lives that you've maybe spent some time talking to. Church, I'm going to tell you, be fervent and passionate about your outreach as a child of God. You may be the only hope that some of those people have, whoever they are. Now listen, I'm going to close. I got more message I could preach, but this is just a good stopping point tonight. I don't want to over preach anything. I don't want to preach past the Lord. But I can tell you tonight that that God is stirred. You know that tonight? That our God is stirred. Don't, don't think that He's not aware of what's taking place in our land today. Uh, things that are going on all over the world. Be thankful tonight. Who in here has somebody they know that's lost? Let me, you just think about this. We sit here tonight because of the mercy of God. Amen. That's it. It's because there are people that are walking this earth today that God's desire is that they make their way to heaven. And He knows that right now all of us have somebody. And it's very likely there's many somebodies. We all probably have several people that we could just list out that are not living or walking for God. It's, it is the mercy of God. Let's take advantage of the mercy of God. Amen. And take this time that we have right now to reach out. Meaning, if you if you are got to offend somebody, and take this in the right way, church, but if you have to offend somebody by telling them that what they're doing is out of line with the Word of God, listen, you're better to offend them. Let them stomach it. Let them digest it. You pray that the Spirit of God would move and, and help them to see it. But don't hold your tongue because you're scared of offending somebody. Amen. 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 Right? Amen. Hallelujah. We need some people that are bold for the things of God. Hungry, passionate. Amen. Passionate for souls. The world's going to try to tell you that you're passionate to offend. That's what the world's going to tell you. The world's going to try to tell you that you're passionate uh, to, to hate. That's what the world's going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now, you just received the word of God. And remember what God has told you and I to do. Amen. We're to go into the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is going to offend at times. It's going to offend. And especially somebody that's living on the wrong side of it. They're going to be offended. So let the name call and fly. Let, let the words of judgment, all of those things that are going to be said, let them fly, church. You just remember that you love them. And you just keep loving them. And you don't react to them. You don't respond in, in, in negatively to their, to their cries and their, their hollering and their shouting and all of those things. And so we, need, we, we just need to, we need to preach. This needs to be preached and preached and preached. I'm going to tell you, because we have had it beat into us. It's, it's every time you turn on the news. You know what I'm talking about. We have been told something totally different than what I'm talking about tonight. 
It has been so, so spilled out that all you got to, and I ain't got time to preach all this, but but all you got to do is watch some of these kids that are coming up. You can't say anything. I mean, you say anything. I'm going to say this and then I'll close out. They were writing the name of our president on steps and kids were falling out on the ground crying and everything else on the sun. They were so offended by the name. Come on. I mean, seriously. Does that not seem a little ludicrous? Some of y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Maybe y'all was laying down crying over that name. I don't know. Amen. I'm just telling you, you know, we, that, that kind of mess is just, it's just that's, that's where we've come to. It doesn't take much of anything to send people off, their, off the rocker. Y'all say that here in Newark, right? Off your rocker. <laughs> you get off your rocker in Kentucky, look out. <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> what? Grandma got off a rocker? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Amen. God help us tonight. Church, I want to do something with you. If you would, let's stand up together. Brother Tony in here somewhere? All right, then I'm going to close it. Listen, I ask you to pray with me tonight. And I ask you to pray for those that are on the fringes, church, for those that that are almost persuaded, that believe but haven't received, that's what we need to be praying for. Amen? And we need to pray for one another right in this place that you and I that have received the Word and have an understanding of it that we not be scared of it. Amen? It's okay to deliver it. Use wisdom, kindness, love. We should be bearing the fruits of the Spirit, all of those things as we're delivering. Uh, but, but make sure that you deliver. And don't let the fact that somebody's going to get offended, that you say, hey, listen, do you understand that, that being an adultery is wrong? I love you. But that adultery is sin, and it's going to send you to hell. Amen? And you say, well, that's bold, Brother Paul. It's the truth. And we've got to quit holding back the truth. Amen? The Bible says the truth of God is withheld in unrighteousness. Amen. You and I are to reveal the truth, God's word. I want us to pray together. Pray for these that are on the fringes, church. Pray that God would give us the wisdom to know how to approach these big issues that are in our land. And we don't even have time to list them all. Is it the drug problem we need to approach? Absolutely. Is it the homosexual issue? The sexual issue It's not just homosexual. You understand we got a big problem with fornication and a whole list of sexual sins that are going on in our land. It's not just homosexuality. That is just one fruit hanging off the same tree. You understand? There's people that, I mean, we got, uh, what was that, Madison, some kind of website out there where you can go out and commit adultery. You can go find somebody. I'm, I want to be an adulterer. Well, me too. Let's meet up. Well, you just all kinds of smart. Amen. There's all kinds of things like that are going on. And we can just keep, we can just keep listening. And then we can get into these things. Like now we're getting into uh, the, the religious things where the Pope is saying this. And, and, and we got people that are teaching uh, false doctrines that are leading people to hell. And I mean, we just got, we need God's direction on how to deal with these things, church. And it's not just to come into our safe place and say, we've got it. We're okay. Yeah. And with that comes a great deal of responsibility. Amen. You mean you've got a sound mind? You can shout the victory because that came from God. And because we have a sound mind, we have also are accountable to God on what we're going to do with that. I could preach a whole message on that tonight, church. Uh, the parable of the talents. Amen. The master come back around expecting a little something. I gave you this. What did you do with it? Well, I buried that. Hey, you in trouble. Don't bury what God's given you. Utilize it. Amen. Sow seed. Amen. Keep receiving it in your life, church. And I don't know if I brought that out well enough tonight. It's not just about getting them to receive it. We got to keep receiving it and keep receiving it and keep allowing God to change us and keep allowing God to mold us and keep allowing God to speak to us and, and make sure that we're keeping our ground fresh that we can receive the word of God and have that transforming our lives as we go along. Amen. Y'all were like, y'all told me, you told me to stand up. Are you going to pray? Are you going to hush up and pray, brother? <laughs> and brother Kelly used to do me like that all the time. He'd like, stand up. I'm like, oh, man, he said, stand up 15 minutes ago. If he's going to preach, why ain't let me sit down for a little while? <laughs> let us pray, church. Our gracious Heavenly Father, 
Lord, we're humbled in your presence tonight, Father. And we're so thankful, God, for the, for the truth. We're thankful for the word. We're thankful for Christ. We're thankful for your Holy Spirit and, and the stirring that we feel in our spirit as we're in this place tonight. God, we know that you are active all around us and we are so appreciative. Now, God, we understand our responsibility. Father God, for what you've given us. Lord, our lives have been transformed. We owe a debt, Father, that's so great we could never pay it, Lord God. Father, we recognize, Lord, what you've done in our lives, Lord. And God, we see the problems in the world. God, we, we see them. We all, we could, we could list them all night. We, we see the issues. And God, we don't want to be silent. We want, we want to conduct ourselves as our Savior would conduct Himself if He was here. Let us, let us speak as Christ spoke. Let us reach out, Father, as Christ would reach out. Help us, Lord, to indeed be the, the hands and the feet of our Savior, Lord God. Help us to walk as the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. God, I pray for us as a people tonight, Lord God, that we continue to receive your word, Lord God. Help us to root out of our life anything, God, that's keeping us from being the best that we can be. God, help us to root out anything that's keeping us from, Lord, enjoying that anointing on our life that gives us the words in the moment that we need them to be able to speak. God, we pray for that spiritual walk with you, Lord. God, help us as the body of Christ, Lord God. And I know that this isn't the entirety of the church tonight. Lord God, there are people all over this world that love you. And Lord God, have indeed received in their heart and spirit, Father, the truth. And we pray for our brothers and sisters tonight, wherever they are. We pray, God, tonight for this Pope. Father, for this, 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 this deception that is being sown into the hearts of men and women. God, we, we pray, Father, for these false doctrines, Lord God, that are, that are being taught in many Protestant churches today. Father God, on uh, once saved, always saved, Lord God, this modern grace movement, whatever they want to call it, Lord God, we, we know it not to be true. We pray today, Lord God, that you'd help us, Lord, to live a life, Father God, uh, Lord God, that we, would, uh, that we would set the example, Father God, to walk in holiness, Lord. God, help us, Lord, to share that truth and make the way attractive, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to recognize the enemy and, and the darts that are, uh, that are flown by him. Help us, Lord, to guard our hearts. And, Father, that we could stand above reproach, that we'd walk worthy of this vocation that we've been called into. God, we need you tonight as your church. We need wisdom beyond us. And I pray, God, that you'd anoint leaders in this place. Leaders right here in this house, oh God, that can go out. God, that we can make disciples, Lord, that we can, we can teach people, that we can lead people. Well, God, that we can guide people and bring people in, Father, and see people, Lord God, won over to what's right. Not just to another building somewhere, but Father God, to the truth. Help us in that tonight. Father, we love you. And we thank you tonight. We appreciate you, Lord. We ask all of these things tonight in the name of our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.